Hey guys, this is Delamar here, and welcome back to Mine's Retro Bits. Last time on the show, we took a look at Super Mario Kart. If you haven't watched part one yet, I recommend that you watch that video first to get caught up with how the whole Mario Kart series came to be, my opinions on this game, and etc, etc. But now it's time to move on to the next installment to the series, which also happens to be my personal favorite Mario Kart game out of all of the Mario Kart games to date, which happens to be Mario Kart 64 on the Nintendo 64, which I'll give my 64 reasons to why I love this game in 64 seconds. No, no, just no. I, I can't do puns on the 64 on the Nintendo. It's... It's annoying, I mean, yeah, it's kind of annoying how they use the 64 as a gimmick to all the titles, but still, I can't make jokes about it, I mean, it's too redundant, you, you know what I'm saying, guys? So, if you recall from last time, Super Mario Kart is a really great game. Sure, the visuals at times does kind of hurt my eyes some, but it's still a solid Super Nintendo title nevertheless. And the year is now 1995, just three years after the release of the first game. And Nintendo has just began production on a sequel, originally titled Super Mario Kart R, to make it a Nintendo launch game for the Nintendo 64. But most of the time was given towards the excellent Super Mario 64, so it would come out a bit later on December 14th, 1996 in Japan, while for us here in the US of A, we we'll have to wait till February to get our hands on it. And since I got Super Mario Kart R on my mind, there's a removed concept that I find interesting. I said in the last video that the feather item only appeared in Super Mario Kart, but it was expected to return in this game, and Magic Koopa would be one of the eight playable drivers replacing Koopa Troopa from the last game. However, they got removed. Cause... people don't collect feathers? And... Who, who gives a crap about Magic Koopa anyway? W would you play as Magic Koopa? Would you want to play Magic Koopa driving down Rainbow Road or something? I probably might. Most of the drivers from the last game makes a return, with only one and a half new drivers joining in. I say one and a half cause one of the new drivers, Donkey Kong, is basically Donkey Kong Jr. grown up. But he's a big boy now, after the events of Donkey Kong Country. No more does he need his training diapers to compete in this race! Or were they suspenders? I don't know. Although he might need some diapers for these kind of moments here. And our other new driver is Wario, first appeared in Super Mario Land 2 and has been a staple Mario character ever since. And has appeared in every Mario Kart game since here and yeah, good. Like in Super Mario Kart there are 4 circuits, but now going only to 4 tracks instead of 5 and you only go around the track 3 laps, no longer 5 laps. Why is that? Because now with the Nintendo 64's polygon shapes, the tracks were much longer, much bigger, and now had elevation and different terrains as opposed to the Super Nintendo's flat tracks. Now there were hills, bridges, walls, pits, and much more that made the tracks stand out from each other. What, it was a big deal back then. And one of the tracks has a choo-choo in it! I like trains. That's ah, good, I'm going home. Wait. No, 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 no. Ah! And while the tracks were three dimensional, the only models that weren't in 3D were the drivers and items, as they were 2D window sprites, kinda like in Donkey Kong Country. Man, I've been mentioning that game a lot in this review. Huh. I must be excited to play Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze then. Speaking of items, we still had the same items from before, but with a few new extras and some that multiplied. You had items that are now tripled, like bananas, mushrooms, green and red Koopa shells. Now you can have three red Koopa shells in one go, which meant now you have three shells to tackle anyone who tries to get in front of you. Whoa! Oh my holy crap! Did you see that? Epic replay is a must. <laughs> Among the new items that made a first appearance are the fake item boxes to fool players that the items are regular item boxes. <laughs> Golden mushrooms to give you multiple speed boots. And finally, the blue spiny shell. When you use this item, it will track down the driver who's currently in first. But rarely did I ever get to use this item in the game. And when you launch it into the midst of the mountains, your only thought that goes to your head is what madness will it produce. Whose lives are at stake? Who will be the next victim to face the blue shell 
and I'm in the mood for some tacos. Yeah, uh, does anyone want any tacos? Um, I'm gonna be right back. Getting back to the tracks now, most of these tracks are amazing. If I make a top 10 favorite Mario Kart tracks list, which chances are I am, most of these tracks will appear on that list from this game, because I love them. So many of these tracks were so fun to race in and offered great strategy too. Anyone remembers the track of Yoshi's Valley? This track was so mysterious to me. Why? Because you didn't know who the heck was in first! All you know is that you just had to race through the small ledges, evil porcupines, and dodge whoever pooped that Yoshi egg that big and never stop moving. I mentioned in the last video that my favorite music track in all of the Rainbow Road tracks was the one in Super Mario Kart. But as for my favorite Rainbow Road race track, it would be this one. It just has such a great atmosphere that I think I can never have again in other Rainbow Roads. Which, I'm not saying the other tracks aren't bad, but I believe that the first Rainbow Road that you race on is the one that you have the most connection to, and that's not a bad thing. Well, at least I hope that's not a bad thing. Neon lights of several Mario characters flashing next to the stars, man-eating chain chops that will make you power slide to avoid them, and flying Koopa shells the... What the hell? And I guess I should mention that this track holds the record for being the longest Mario Kart track ever. Hamburgers. The tracks are awesome, that's all I'm getting at. And while Nintendo used the N64's polygon shapes to its advantage, there was some technical difficulties regarding the ghost save data on it. Now, I'm not adding this as a complaint by all means because I didn't use the ghost data to save on whatever, but if you want to talk about the game's faults, because this game is perfect in my eyes, I guess I should mention the ghost data problem. Now, I don't know how any of this works, but apparently when this game was originally released, it used 123 pages of the controller park to record ghost data, which will occupy all the space in the park's memory. However, later versions of this game used 121 pages, leaving only 2 pages free. So hey, even though I can't use it to save my ghost data, I can only save this picture here. Because of that, it's impossible to record the ghost data on the Wii version. So, if you're planning on getting this game for the Wii Virtual Console, and you're big about saving ghost data, and you wanted to save your ghost data... Sorry, buddy! But enough about ghost data sheets. Yes, dive into the new features that they added regarding the Mario Kart Grand Prix, and the multiplayer modes. We still have the original 50, 100, and 150 CC from the first game, but now with a twist. If you win all four gold medals on 150 CC, you get to unlock Mirror Mode, or Extra Mode as it's called here, and a new title screen. Mirror Mode is the same as the other cups, except everything is mirrored, and it's a bit difficult. Well, okay, it's not supreme difficult, but it's still challenging and fun to play on, although I must warn you. Toad's Turnpike in Mirror Mode is without a doubt the hardest track in all of Mario Kart. Why? Well, play the footage. Mommy! Most of the other modes make a comeback like Time Trial, Versus Mode, Battle Mode, etc. However, the big catch to this is that no longer did you have to do two player matches, but now you can battle against not two, not three, but f which is probably the coolest addition to the Mario Kart series. No longer did two of your other buddies have to wait their turn, but now you can all join the madness at the same time. Now there will be a clip playing with me, Black Cross, Shadow and Search playing the full play of Mario Kart as I explained. However, there's one problem. They have lives. I do not have a life. One last thing I should mention about this game, aside from saying that it's THE BEST MARIO KART GAME OF ALL TIME, is that there's a hidden easter egg in this game. When I was a kid, I didn't come across this scene that much, but when I did, it was really sad, but funny, and served me right for being a bad racer. To get this hidden ending, all you need to do is just place fourth overall in any cup. It sounds easy, but it's actually kind of hard to pull off. You see, if you place at fifth or lower, you have to retry the race again. 
If you want to see this scene, I recommend going into the Mushroom 50cc and win each race in 4th place. Luckily it wasn't hard for me, and now, let us watch this glorious scene in all of its enhanced glory. So with all that in mind, how's Mario Kart 64? It's my favorite Mario Kart game out of all the Mario Kart games. No question, yes there's been many great improvements in all the future installments, but this game will always be my favorite Mario Kart game, with some of my favorite race tracks to go on, uh, great music scores, gameplay, and introduce so many great stuff including mirror mode, uh, full player, multiplayer, that's a plus, and it's overall just a great game. So. Definitely get this game, whether you have it on N64, Wii Virtual Console, or download it illegally on an emulator, just play it. And I love it. On the next episode of Mullins Retro Bits, it's time to go into the first handheld Mario Kart title, Mario Kart Super Circuit. Hey, thanks for watching this video! If you'd like to see the previous Mullins Retro Bit, which I did on Super Mario Kart, just click that little annotation there. And also, here's the, uh, well, we haven't made a new video in a while, so just keep watching that one video with the, uh, with the Pikmin and the Shadow doing the Dirty Harry ripoff, I don't know. Oh, and also, don't forget to check out my second channel where I host my Thomas comedies, my editorials, etc. And also, don't forget to like my Facebook page where I post daily updates. Daily. Well, okay, I haven't really been updating the Facebook a lot because, well, my internet has been screwing up again, but whatever. In any case, like, subscribe, don't forget to comment, and if you'd like to leave me advice on how I can improve my videos, please do that. In any case, bye bye